Hello everyone, I'm Namrata. So I've done my graduation in electronics and communication engineering from ID Dhanbad. And post that I worked as a software engineer with LG for a year. But then like uh, I wanted to do something else in life. I wanted to prepare for civil services. So I went in for that and like I put in a lot of efforts, but finally I couldn't meet through the final step. So like after some years, I thought that probably this is not where I'm supposed to be. I couldn't make through. So the second thing, since I wanted to be in the same space of the social impact and doing something in this and being with people. So I thought of doing HR and that's where this came into the picture. So like I started to see what are the colleges that are there in India. And based on the return on investment, I found that, yes, this like is something that I could go for. So I prepared for this night for almost like one or one month or two so. And the main important thing about the this was the OPI because I did not have too much experience about that. And that's where Pratik sir was there to help me. So like I would I'm very thankful to Sir for helping me get through the second phase of interview. Right and extempore. So yeah, that's about it. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. So Disha, you have also joined this Narsi Munji, and now you are at this. So tell us uh, why this HRM is so special, and what is the course all about? Sure, sir. Um, so I would just start by uh, telling how the pedagogy is there in NM and how it is here at this. So uh, I, I'm sure all of, if like, somebody has prepared for uh, entrance exams and the entrance exams, they would know that uh, most, most these schools follow a trimester-based system. Uh, similarly, NM also does that. And here it is, we have a semester-based system. So that's a key differentiator because I feel that we get more time to understand our subjects. We get more time to uh, dive deeper into whatever we are studying. Um, apart from that, uh, Again, the field work, of course, is the most coveted thing that this has to offer because it gives you a hands-on experience on how things actually work in the world. Every, <clears throat> not all these schools, I mean, this is, this is what happens here. And we have done our first field work. And I believe that that's what, I mean, that, that experience has helped me in understanding how organizations actually do work and what I have to offer them. So apart from that, I think that uh, this being a social sciences institute, it has given me an opportunity to interact with people who are not just focused on uh, business, who have different perspectives than ours. Although we have a very hectic schedule compared to the other courses, but still we get to see how we can integrate diverse perspectives into uh, our processes of thinking and how we can contribute uh, likewise. So I think these three things are what differentiate this. And lastly, ROI is something that, I mean, stands out from all, I mean, amongst all the B schools and compared to um, in uh, across India. So it's just, you know, um, the minimal investment that you can give for education and you get a lot out of it, not in terms of money. I mean, monetary uh, benefits are there, but you get to learn a lot from people who are there to learn. So like-minded people and people from diverse backgrounds, people who have seen a lot in their life. And I would uh, say that, you know, my in my batch, I have people who are, uh, you know, uh, who have already worked and they have experience so I get to learn um, as, as I don't have any experience yet. So I get to learn from them. So I think um, that's how I believe this and NM have been different for me. Okay, Siddharth, uh, would you like to share some insight or, about the course? Whatever you feel. Sure, sir. Mm -hmm. So adding to what Disha has already told that what separates this from other uh, typical B schools is our fieldwork stints. Now these, I think these fieldwork stints uh, are the reason that the industry prefers this over other HR colleges as well, because these are actually 
corporate stints where we actually go and learn about the uh, projects which are going on about the skills which the industry demands moreover at this uh, we will actually get time to look and deep dive into ourselves whether what are we learning why are we learning and like other b schools we can question everything uh, from our professors to our uh, colleagues to everybody but in a typical b school you won't get that chance you want that time to actually stop and look around yourself what are you doing why are you doing uh, regarding the pedagogy of this as disha has already mentioned that uh, it's a quite hectic schedule compared to other courses at this but at the same time as compared to the typical b school settings it's a bit less hectic than that so yeah okay namrata uh, give us your insight because your insight is important uh, you are from totally your different background coming from a different background and after a gap of so many years you have come here so what's your insight of the course yeah so like the uh, the very important part as they already highlighted is the field work so the, the the other important part about the field work is that during the entire uh, two year course you get to have four field works and don't just see it in terms of the numbers also see it in terms of diversity of organizations and industries that you'll come across so in a career span of around 10 years you would expect that you would go for around like maybe like two or three areas where you would be able to work upon and see how things work around but at this only like within two years you get to see like four different industries so that is a very great experience for you and that that's that's a very good value addition to your profile so that's the first thing now coming on to the course so like the first semester they have given a lot of focus to the foundational course so which actually is like the main important thing that this offers because in the foundation courses you have the uh, subjects which revolve around the social part right so you get to know actually like the things so people who are uh, who have done preparation for upsc for them it might be something similar I think uh, namrata has disconnected okay am i audible yes sir namrata ka dikkat hai i think for audible yeah. like, yeah, so there's some issue with the uh -huh. go on yeah. go on namrata can you hear me sir go on. yeah go on yeah yeah so sorry so sorry for the disruption so yeah so i was adding about the foundation course so yeah so that's like a like a very important thing to me so because being in the field of hr you you also need to know that how is the society and in order to be able to ensure that whatever policies you make and whatever other things that you try to incorporate in the organization you bring the people perspective at the center so i think foundation courses are something that could help you in doing those things so yeah those are the two things that i would like to like tell that they are very really unique so yeah next question where you know what is business everybody knows here what what is business and what is opi so i would be like uh, you people to share what happens after you qualify tisnet so disha you can start and then siddharth will add sure sir <clears throat> so um after we qualify tisnet the next process for i i tell how it was for me because i suppose that uh, maybe this time it would be different as uh, things might be offline so after um, my testnet i had to prepare for the interview uh, and the extempore so the online uh, interview uh, i had online interview and before that i had extempore so that's when uh, i joined the teachers uh, classes um, and i think that uh, for extempore what's important is um, how vast your knowledge is on the current topics and how well you are able to articulate your thoughts so it's just a minute and a half speech that you have to give but and you you get half a minute to think about the topic that the faculty members then 
so the prime part for the extensive and uh, uh, would help you out with all the extempore mock extempories and mock interviews uh, that is please take those seriously because i think that would help you to understand where you what your flaws are and how you can actually overcome those because ultimately what would matter is in those 15 minutes or so how well you can present yourself be it the extempore or the interview after you are done with your extempore and i hope that you do well but even if you think that you are not somehow you know you did not do as well as you would have liked to do in that extempore please don't let it affect your interview because that also is a major component of evaluation so after the extempore is done uh, in the interview focus on so the kind of questions that are asked will depend on uh they just want to know who you are as a person why where do you want to go from here on and what have you learned from your past experiences so these three key things you would you should know about yourself because uh that will tell them why you want to be here at this why at this and why not somewhere else so focus on knowing yourself better uh, uh increase your knowledge by reading about things that interest that you have interest in and that are actually relevant in current time so if you're applying for hrm and lr you it is important for you to know what are the current trends that are going around what are the organizations doing right now and why are they doing it and if maybe if you know you were there in their place what would you do so this this kind of a little bit of critical thinking and decision making and how what all factors could you inculcate in when you are deciding something are important other than that your uh what it is that you know what are your goals what are your passion what passions and what are your hobbies this is all that uh, they want to know and please uh, when you go for an the interview ensure that you have read enough about hrm and lr that is really important so uh, in my preparation i read about hrm when i came to pratik sir's classes i got to know that i had not learnt about lr and it is very important that you do that also so don't just focus on hrm focus on lr as well yeah so that was my experience siddharth your experience you can share complete if you wish the complete process how it went yeah sure so as i this was my third attempt and i've seen the whole wide spectrum of the second part of the process first time it was only interview second time there was dismat and third time it was no dismat and only extempo plus opi so i would recommend that uh, work on the things that are under your control do not worry about things that are not under your control sometimes it may happen that at the last moment that is administration or the exam uh, setting body may change some pattern and you must have been preparing according to the last year but keep in mind that it is a very uh, it is a very you know sublime uh, volatile process it can Dynamic change at any process. moment yeah. yeah so be prepared for anything the most important thing which you should be having in an uh, opi is first your smile and second your confidence sometimes we know the answer and but we look nervous which gives the other person reflection that we are not sure of something and when these teachers who have been taking into for the past so many years when they see this that you are not even confident about giving your answer they will grill you right at that moment so i would uh, say that be confident carry a smile and yeah as disha mentioned that since it's a course for hrm and lr you must be knowing at least something about hrm and lr you can go through the basics of the uh, uh, courses mentioned in that is website just the basic would do enough secondly about the opi extempore part usually it is given uh, for the current affair topics which are in news yeah sorry so mm -hmm. uh, don't underestimate the value what the current affair topics carry as pratik mm -hmm. uh, sir must have often told you that please go through the cur current affairs and you know whatever happens happens for a good reason and i'll give you a small example how small things matter so even if you are given that uh, you have to speak for 3 minutes in an extempore which many people are fearful of and you you think that you should know you should be knowing everything about the topic it's not like that sometimes the small nuances like uh, which index 
on which country is on uh, which index which ranking uh, what is the policy you can just insert this small small informations in the extempore which will extend your time so in this way you can you know crack your extempore and opi and do not think about that you are coming from a, a very general background like the uh, people from engineering usually think that uh, we don't stand a chance or people sometimes people have hesitation that we don't come from a premier institute so we don't have a chance so we have people ranging from all institutions all across india from all the states in our class so do not worry about what was your past this is the only institute which do not uh, does not looks what was your past it looks what can you bring to the future yeah yeah so before namrata will add i will just give one example of a girl who is right now your classmate okay she is from srcc okay now uh, she calls me and tells me just a day before the interview that uh, sir i have found lot many people are saying the students who are from premium institute they are grill okay so that uh, preconception or preconceived notion whatever preconceived notions are there they are you know some students will be there because of their one single interview they will talk about those things so that is not there actually okay they are not going to judge on your background as siddharth rightly said what you are going to do in the future that matters more and you will have to show your clarity of purpose and you know that conviction should be there and clarity of purpose should be there your background 10th mein kitna tha 12th mein kitna tha those things will not matter your yeah, number the second round experience yeah start from that this was actually the most important part yeah I start sure, from sure. that yeah, so yeah the yeah. second part was the yeah so second part as like others have added like even for me that was the most important part so for me writing that was also a very big deal so i was very like not confident when i was writing my dab so i took so so help and he actually helped me to write it in such a manner that i was able to show through my dab that who actually i am what is my aspiration why do i want to go to this and everything so it was in such a structured manner that like anybody who reads it would understand that yes this is a person who genuinely genuinely wants to uh, go and uh, and uh, like learn the things right and go uh, go to this course so this this is the most important part how you write your dav so your dav should be a reflection of your entire life journey in such a manner that even if when somebody else reads it they understand that okay the life choices that you have made whatever it has been there in your life and how you reached here to this decision of joining this so that that's something which should reflect in your uh, dav and uh, you should be very honest about whatever you write in your dav because the panel who will be sitting in front of you ha has like like if the combined experience of the panel who would be sitting in front of you would would be approximately like 30 to 40 years so obviously you can't lie in front of them so be very very honest about whatever you write so that's the first part about the dav and i would also like to talk about like how i prepare so as sir had told about the things that i should do so i would also like to just elaborate on that part so in your um, opi so the first part is extempore and that would obviously be either based on the current issues current trends that are happening so don't expect that it will be only in the field of hrm it could be any general topic as well and then also it could be something philosophical as well so both the things are there so they give you two chances means if the first topic you are not confident about you can ask for the second one so please remember that so what happened is in my interview I actually forgot that i had the option of the second one so i went for the first one so i, I was not very much confident but still i went because i had forgotten that i have the second option so even that happens so you should keep all those things in your mind so that's the first part about the exempt about the interview as i said so there are three areas from which questions could be asked in the interview the first is your dav that's the most important part they want to know that why do you want to join it so this is the most important thing so they want to see that what is your motive why do you want to join this are you a right candidate to uh, join this course and apart from that what value would you add if you were to join the course at the end 
so you you have to show that what is what exactly is it that you expect from the course and how would you add value to it so that's the first part the second is uh since you will be joining the course you must also know that what are the courses that uh the subjects that will be taught so it's important that you go through all the courses that are taught in each of the semester and if there is something that excites you please read more about it sometimes how it happens is in the interview uh, one of one or two faculties will also ask you did you find anything interesting in the course and what is it that excites you so if this question was also asked to me so i prepared that so i could answer it right so you could also have opinion based questions like if you are from a certain region they if there is anything that's happening in that region they could ask you about that and also ask you of your opinion on that so i remember during my uh, like when i gave the opi the i think the uh, the babri masjid and all that issue was going on so they asked me about that my opinion on that so yes they could ask you controversial questions as well so you have to be very much careful about what you speak so that was there and then yes the current trends so that that are always there and the hr related things right so be be prepared on all those things and if you could also read about any personality which inspires you to be in the hr field that will also be very Uh, helpful to you. So I used to do that. That since I was Lina like Nair. I was actually inspired by Lena Nair. So I read about her, and yeah. So that that was the nature thing. Yeah, I think okay, I've so added. There, yeah, <laughs> there is a doubt that uh, having certifications or internship is going to help in the process of selection. I don't think so. So, Namrata, what do you think? Having certification or internship in HR is going to help. what i believe is it is going to add questions it is going to add questions whatever certifications you have done questions will be so, asked from there yeah so my what i feel is that you don't worry if you don't have any certifications or something like that so don't think like oh i don't have the certifications i must go for it so let me start with a course in which i'll get a certification no there's no need to do such kind of thing please don't worry about it but if you already have it and you want to put it in your dash make sure that you know properly about it because then you will be asked questions on that and if you don't answer it will be like a bad impression on you so if you have it make sure that you know everything about it if you don't have it please don't worry about it because it is not something that they will judge you upon so they don't want you to be already having a certification or having uh, that you know everything about hrm already no they don't want that they just want to know that okay do you have the basic understanding of the field or not So as per me, you don't need an extra certification in the field of HR to be here at this. Yeah. So here we are not going to discuss the uh, other questions. What is the placement scenario and not? Just tell us uh, that uh, you know the the summer placement when it happens and how it happens. It happens within two three months, I think. The, so you know, yeah. So actually, uh, our our uh, first semester started the on twenty fifth of August. I think something around the, the end 25th, of August it started, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, yeah, something something that date only at the end of August. So within I think within uh, like just two or three weeks after the semester started, we had our placements. Some of uh, some of these uh, the SIPs. so yeah that was it so we did not knew much about the subject at that time so like yeah we uh, went through this based on the understanding and whatever we had studied during that part and like apart from that there were certain other things that we were asked by our seniors to work upon like uh, we we studied ob organization behavior and the labor law so these were the two things uh, based on which we were asked the questions in the placements and these were the things that we had prepared apart from your general behavioral questions that everywhere you have to prepare so so that was about uh, the summer placement and yes it went very well so yeah i think probably you would have seen those on the uh, linkedin page of this as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that tell us how hectic it is matlab the course how Sir, hectic yeah one it, it depends from student to student for some students who have work ex or who have in the past worked under pressure situations so
so they are able to manage it quite well and mm-hmm. some people who are you know freshers and don't had work experience so sometimes they they struggle to cope up with the pressure so i think it's depend on a student to student it's not applicable and or same for everyone yeah so but i have also you know general perception ki yeah there are a lot many things to do out there okay within no. two years so i can assure you that if you come at this you will get plenty of time to mm-hmm. you know even pursue your activities your other hobbies as well okay. okay ha huh, there are people who are doing it, you know other things also yeah then any questions you have you can write in the comment then we will take some of your questions questions can be written in the comment one more thing i wanted to add to what namrita said earlier that mm-hmm. the daf is the most important thing during the second part so even if somebody okay. wakes you up in the middle of night and ask you any mm-hmm. question from daf you should be mm-hmm. very thorough with that your daf okay so i will read uh, some of the question sir the first question is sir please ask about age bar is there age bar i don't think there is have see there is no age bar there are people who are above 30 years of age and uh, you know there are people i don't think that 10th 12th mark is also that relevant okay and then the thing is there is another question do we need to know about hrm lr from any book see there there was a question to some other student so what is the last book on hr which you have read so such questions can be there okay so try to read at least one hr book after your uh, testnet okay then lr they will ask and how much time we get after testnet result to prepare for that daf you will have to submit within a month or so and then you will have test net acha question related to our graduation background yeah so actually siddharth can elaborate he is asking the questions will come from our graduation background or not yes of course it will come yeah so it depends on panel as well uh, mm-hmm. f- at one point in one interview i was asked questions from my engineering background and second time i was not asked even one question from my engineering background so it depends on panel as well but you are expected that you should be thorough at least with your uh, major subjects mm-hmm. of your graduation whenever you are filling daf there are subjects mentioned what are the main main subjects of all the year all the semesters so at least be thorough with those subjects at least okay there is another question how is it different for a fresher and for a work is for a person having work at so siddharth or namrita you can take namrita you please namrita so yeah. suppose there is a person who has experience and there is another person who does not have experience yeah so i think i could uh, i answer it from the perspective of somebody who has experience so see that uh, once you have experience so then uh, there will be questions uh, in your uh, interview that why is it that you want to like switch career or why is it that you want to come into this field so this this is the most important thing that will be asked so if you have certain experience in certain other field maybe you are not in the field of hr so then you need to justify that why is it you want to join this course what inspired you or why, what is the reason behind your switching the things right so that's the first thing that they ask the other thing if they feel that uh, your justification is right and they are like uh, they, they are okay with your justification the second question they could they would ask you is that uh, what value would you add from the experience that you have in the field of hr or how do you think your previous experience is going to help you being a, being a good hr or being in the field of people management so so these are the things that you would probably be probably be asked about so i think you could prepare on these lines so that that's one part and then like sometimes they they may also ask you questions like they they'll ask you and they would expect that you justify how would you answer these questions in front of an organization who comes for placement at the end so i i remember i was asked something similar i don't remember the exact question but yes they wanted me to explain that how 
if an organization would ask me that you have such an uh, like such a huge experience and then you have come here and then you again are going to come as an hr so how do you justify that so that justification is something which is important and you you need to be able to do that properly okay there is one more question is the time after test net sufficient to prepare for the next round or should i start preparing right now so yeah namrata go on you can take this question okay so uh, i see the even even when you are preparing your test net you are actually preparing for your opi and interview as well why because see when you are preparing for your test net you are also preparing for the current events so when you know about the current events obviously you are preparing for your extempore probably you are not articulating in that manner but you have the uh, the, the folder which you will use as a part of your extempore right so when you are doing preparation for your test net you are actually preparing for your opi as well so that's important that when you are going through your current affair things just make sure that things are very much clear you're not doing it in the rote manner just for remembering okay this happened here this is happening no not just that be clear about why that thing is happening what is your opinion on that and how could you relate it to your field or what do you think that probably would happen in the future or what is the reason so things like that like the critical thinking part about whatever is happening the current trend or something similar so if you are doing this much you are also at the same time preparing for your opi in my opinion okay so basically you know uh, i take their classes for gk and whenever i take the hindu classes the hindu discussion in the morning what i do i just not uh, read them the news rather we discuss the news whatever has happened okay we try to develop some point of view some you know opinion over that and that is what is going to help you in the next round that is my experience yeah, yeah. sure sure, not, sure. Uh, i was yeah i was just telling about the people who might not be involved with the ignited is so who are probably doing it on their own for them uh-huh. it is important that you don't just remember also, the things also but obviously me, somebody is with pratik sir so then you need not worry everything will be yeah. taken care of and you will very like you'll enjoy the entire process so that has been my experience and i believe everybody who has been with pratik sir would have had the similar experience for sure yeah, so- Navrata, could you tell us your experience and then Siddharth uh, with Clubhouse? So, because oh, what yeah. was Clubhouse and <laughs> how, yeah, yeah. So, Clubhouse was a very good initiative, and uh, I am very like thankful to Sir for having arranged th- those sessions because because it was a very good experience. What happens is when you uh, like when you are preparing for your test net or any other exam, you are very much tense, like. many people are tense many people get nervous uh, there are very few people who would not get nervous or who would be very much confident like even i was very much like on the like nervous side and uh, like if there is some topic about which i am not very confident i would like i would fumble in between and then my thought flow and how i'm speaking my articulation would not be very well so probably i have the things that i want to speak but the manner in which i would speak would not like uh, come out very well so through those sessions what happened is that sir would randomly give any topic and then we were supposed to speak on that and uh, at random sir would ask anybody in the queue to like start what they wanted to speak so through that there were two things that i could like I, that helped me first is that i started to speak in front of people so my hesitation was gone the first part the second part is i learned articulation how to uh, speak whatever i wanted to in a structured manner in some uh, in a manner that anybody who's listening to it makes sense out of it and is able to link whatever i'm speaking and the third which was the most important part apart from what i already knew since i was listening to other people i also got to know that what is their thought what is their opinion or is there anything extra that they know which i don't know so those were the things that i could add to my knowledge so that was a very good value addition to my knowledge as well so both in terms of articulation and okay siddharth you can speak now you have a problem yeah i think she has internet yeah. problem so yeah. my clubhouse experience what can i say i was busy in the you know sorry my... 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So about my club. Yeah, that club. is correct. About my clubhouse experience, I was very busy during my working hours, and after that, I had to take out time to revise and to give mocks and everything. So it would be it sound very funny, but I didn't speak even once during the clubhouse sessions. But I was very sure that at least I attend those. So what benefit I think I got was that actually I got to know how to articulate it better. I learned about the new topics which are going on. and what are the views different people have so when you listen so many things you actually pick out small small nuances small small things from each and everybody's uh, extempore and you make it something new you actually have something in your subconscious memory which you can use during your extempore so i was able to do this and um, probably i was lucky that i didn't had to attend another club or session and got through this this time then diksha uh, actually i am not able to view her okay if you can listen disha you can listen me yeah she is here okay disha we had one to one sessions one to one extempore sessions so could you tell your experience of that yes sir yeah. um so i have already mentioned uh, in brief about those but i would definitely go into details so um i wanted to uh, so one of the questions that was asked in the chat was whether or not i mean how to improve articulation so i as pratik sir told me i did not actually have problem with articulation but i had problem with uh, what the what the content was so i could frame sentences well and i knew how to speak but there was that depth speak? that was lacking so um in my experience with pratik sir and in those extempories what i learned was that both of these things are very important it is important to be well read about things and it is important to know how to speak those in your own language uh, because you whatever you will you will you know read so many things in this period in this period so uh, remembering all that also is taxing so note you know start making notes of what is what are the key points in whatever article you read or uh, whichever video that you see about current affairs or uh, about hrm or anything that you are reading and uh, watching so start taking notes so that the content that is there you know you actually have some of it in your mind you have the points in your mind the material material that pratik sir provides uh, you uh, please ensure that you go through it again and again over and over so that it stays with you over a period of time because that will help you in articulation as well uh articulation comes when you know what you want to speak and you know i would say that articulation will not be a problem for you if you are clear in your thoughts so clarity of thoughts is very important um uh, i think yeah so uh, my experience for extempore uh, was that uh one uh, ensure that you have clarity of thoughts two uh, have content make sure that you uh, remember the things that are important and three um, not uh, least but definitely uh, no i mean you know practice in front of a mirror or anywhere or you know in these ex these extempore would give you a platform to practice so please make you know don't uh, don't skip on these because sometimes your mind works in that manner you know that maybe today i'm not you know i'm not feeling like it so i won't appear for the mock interview or mock extempore please don't do it uh, please ensure that you practice in time because anyway there's not much time so whatever you are getting make full of it yeah yeah so spurti has just uh, messaged me spurti and ditha are two you know individuals i would say they both are in hrm course so when they came to me before coming to me they were not aware of labor relations so they were not at all you know aware of labor relations that much so when they came to me they went through the material which was there every level law was discussed and everything happened and that actually helped that actually helped uh, spurti also and she got one of the highest marks in you know interview it was around 82 or 81 okay so what i want to say is you try to learn the name of your course that is this hrm and lr and then go through the website read each word out there and try to make note of each word 
for example decent work is a term given there that is very important it is very important concept okay so if you will do that then yeah first try to clear the this net and then you will have to work upon articulation and you will have to work upon gaining all those fodder points the fodder knowledge upon the sociopolitical events upon something related to hr etc and that will help you all so i think uh, we'll wrap up and thank you namrata thank you disha and siddharth for taking time and you know coming here and taking the questions from students thank you thanks all so now i will thank be you, wrapping yeah thank i will you, be... thank you sir anybody yeah everybody yeah yeah anybody has nobody has. okay fine okay then let me stop the recording